Be seated. Open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 17. I want to uh, finish up last week's message. If we have time, I'll get into next week's message. Revelation chapter 17, we've been learning about how Christ is going to judge Babylon and the great harlot church. And um, we saw last week... Babylon is seen in Scripture in the following ways. We saw that Babylon began at the Tower of Babel, and that Babel was built by Nimrod. We saw, secondly, the Tower of Babel's characteristics, which are pride, rebellion, and idolatry. <clears throat> we also saw, thirdly, that, Babel that Babylon became a world empire. And today I want to uh, look at point number four. Babylon is symbolic of the Roman Catholic Church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. It's your day, Father, and I thank you that we could come here and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, as we present the truth, Father, I pray that thy Holy Spirit will control my heart and my emotions, my mind as we preach your precious word, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, state this morning, so that there's no misunderstanding out there in the computer world, and as we're being taped, uh, as we go through this prophecy series, first of all, I want everybody to know that I do not hate anyone. When, I'm going, when I give the characteristics of the Roman Catholic Church, what I'm against and what I hate about the Roman Catholic Church is its system. I do not hate Roman Catholics as people. I love them. They need to be saved. They need to be born again. And they need to come to know the truth that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. So I want the world to know that. I have nothing against Catholics personally as human beings. But I despise the system and the falsehood of that church because it lies to people. And it's got people stooped, stooped, and much deception that needs to be exposed. And I want you to notice that in our text this morning in Revelation chapter 17, you'll see that that mystery the Babylon, the great, in verse number 5, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. We will see that this Babylonian system is the same system that the Roman Catholic Church is in. The Roman Empire took over the idolatrous mystery religion from Babylon and the papacy and the ecclesiastical Rome digested all of this and their ancient idolatries and they tried to Christianize them making them part of her dogmas and her rituals there's no question about that I want you to notice number one here that this harlot church what I, who I believe is the Roman Catholic Church in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 9 here is the mind which has wisdom seven heads are seven mountains or hills on which the woman sits. Notice it, on which the woman sits. He, the Bible tells us specifically uh, that this church, this harlot church, which I believe is the Roman Catholic Church, has ridden through the church history upon the backs of kings, is clothed in gorgeous robes, and decked in expensive uh, attire. There's no question about that. And we should go into this in deeper detail when we get to Revelation chapters 1, uh, uh, chapter 17 and chapter 18 when we get really specific in the verses. Right now, remember, this is all introduction. She sits on the hills, the seven hills. Here's the point I want to make with this. Countless multitudes of deceived people from practically every nation blindly follows Rome's errors and, and glory in Rome's false religion. They glory in it. 
Rome became the headquarters of the Babylonians, when you study history. And Rome became the headquarters of there, and the chief priests wore mitres shaped like a head of a fish in honor of the, of the false god, the fish god, Dagon. These mitres, no coincidence. When you look at the priest robe, he's got a mitre, and it's got a fish head on it. That's the worship of a false fish god. And when the chief priest was established in Rome, he took the title of Pontifex Maximus. He took that title. When Julius Caesar became head of the state, he was elective Pontus Maximus, and this was held by all Roman emperors down even to Constantine, who was at one and the same time head of the church and the high priest of that heathen religion. And here's the point of interest I want you to understand this morning. The title of Pontifex Maximus was conferred upon the bishops of Rome and is today borne by the Pope, who is thus declared to be not the successor of the fisherman Peter, no, but the direct successor of the high priest of the Babylonian system the mysteries, and the servant of the fish god, Dagon, from whom, when you look at the Pope today, when they kiss the ring, the ring has a fisherman head on it. All can be traced back to Babylonian worship of the false fish god. Proven in history. Anybody who wants to study history can get these facts. And during the early centuries of the church history, I, the idolatrous practices have been fostered upon the people as Christian sacraments, and they, they took the place of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This amazing ungodly system dominated Europe for thousands of years until the great reformation of the 16th century. Today, one-third of Christendom is following the Roman Catholic Churches, its images, its idols, and its false doctrine. One-third of the world is practicing this false religion. Sometimes it's just hard to grasp. The Roman Catholic Church's temples are only different in name from the image worship in its groves and its temples of the Sumerians to Ashtoreth to Isis, the so-called Queen of Heaven. Mm. The Queen of Heaven is worshipped. The Mother of Jesus assumed no such title among the early church of the day. Never was she given that title. Never, I say. The early church, the born-again believers, never elevated Mary to the queen of heaven. Not one time. But the false Catholic church system did. The queen of heaven is a Babylonian religious worship system, pure and simple. I want you to notice that the Babylonian, the Babylon stands for the world system that is opposed to God and has his truth and is head, headed up by Satan himself. Look at 2 Corinthians this morning, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible says, whose minds... The God, notice small capital G, okay, notice that, it's not a capital G. Whose minds the God of this age, that's Satan, has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. One of the greatest joys that Satan has is to get people away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what better way to do it than in a false religion? The Bible says, turn to Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, notice verse 2. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the